Good evening. We're going to be using the Order of Compline this evening for our worship this Holy Monday. It can be found on page 722 of the Book of Common Prayer, and if you do not have that, it is readily available on the anglican.ca website. You can download it to use, and it can still be found on page 722. We share in this time of reflection and devotion together. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Our reading for this evening, our second part of the whole story of the Passion, which began on Palm Sunday, is found in the Gospel of John, chapter 12, beginning at the first verse. Six days before the Passover, Jesus arrived at Bethany, where Lazarus lived, whom Jesus has ra had raised from the dead. Here a dinner was given in Jesus' honor. Martha served, while Lazarus was among those reclining at table with him. Then Mary uh, took a, about a pint of pure nard, an expensive perfume. She poured it on Jesus' feet, and wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, who was later to betray him, objected. Why wasn't this perfume sold, and the money given to the poor? It was worth a year's wages. He did not say this because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. As keeper of the money bag, he used to help himself to what was in it. Leave her alone, Jesus answered. It was intended that she should save this perfume for the day of my burial. You will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. Meanwhile, a large crowd of Jews found out that Jesus was there and came and not only because of him, but also to see Lazarus, whom they, he had raised from the dead. So the chief priests made plans to kill Lazarus as well, for on account of, how many, of him, many of the Jews were going over to Jesus, putting their faith in him. Praise be to thee, O Christ. I speak to you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue in our worship this week, and in the many ways that we continue in this story, this passion story that started yesterday in great celebration, but now is quiet. The way Jesus is with his followers now, almost hid away with Lazarus and his family, it almost reflects how many of us are at this time. We are secluded, sequestered, away with some of our own family and deep, dearest friends who are in homes with us. Those of us who are quarantined together, those of us who are at home together. And now we are probably sitting around a, a supper table just as they were. And maybe they too are sharing in a meal and maybe just like them, they, we are all together speaking of things to come speaking of all the things that can happen this week, speaking of the leaders of the government and all of their decrees, speaking of those seeking health and prosperity from those around them and from Jesus who is now in town, speaking of celebrities and what's going on with them as people came to see Lazarus. Maybe we are all in those ways. But something we take for granted, something we often take for granted, but I think after this long stint apart, I don't think anybody will be taking it for granted ever again. It's physical touch, that intimacy that we can share with each other, and I don't mean anything uh, outside of the realm of care and love and sincere touch that we can share with each other. A handshake, a high five, a hug, 
a pat on the shoulder, a kiss on the cheek. In this case, tonight, we have a sincere moment that will be reflected again on Monday Thursday. A moment of sincere devotion, a moment of sincere love, a moment of sincere preparedness. For even though Mary may not have known what it was exactly that she was preparing to do for Jesus, that maybe she was doing this in a moment of love and care of a different way. But in this moment, in this moment of sharing her in this moment of giving of her love and her heart she shared with Jesus something more intimate than any of the other disciples could she being depending on uh, which gospel you follow she being the first at the graveside following his resurrection she being the first there to tell then the others what had happened. And she now preparing him for that same burial. And in the midst of all of this, of course, there were the naysayers, those who say you shouldn't. And at this time, that intimacy is exactly what we are told we cannot have. How hard that is. How hard it is not to share that simple moment of care, and love and trust with another person because we ourselves are drawn away. Jesus was drawn away in this moment, but even then, people wanted to be intimate, a part of him. There's a symbolism here as well, greater than just a moment of shared uh, anointing. It's not just a blessing, it's not just a moment of preparation for the grave, but it's something greater. And it's something I want to share with you from a book that I have cherished ever since it was given to me. The Reverend Stephen Reynolds is a priest who, before he passed away, uh, was living in Toronto. He is a gentleman who I got to know when I was studying there. And he is a kind man, a good priest, and a wonderful person, an excellent teacher. He wrote this book, Christ Our Passover, which is Meditations on the Mystery of Salvation. And he wrote it specifically for this time of year, for Lent, and for everything that comes after, in the Easter tide, and in the Holy Week. He puts it best in how I want to express exactly what it is that Mary is doing here today. And I want to share that with you, if you'll bear with me. <clears throat> this passage from his book is entitled, The Anointing of Jesus. And I want you to consider it as you reflect upon this passage tonight. <clears throat> Mary took a pound of costly ointment of pure nard and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of the ointment. Jesus understood what this anointing meant. Mary had performed a sacrament of his burial. Anointing was performed for other very different reasons, too. For Aaron, the brother of Moses, he was made a priest when the jar of oil was poured over his head. So much oil that in Psalm 133, it says the ointment ran down upon his beard and soaked the collar of his robe. And David was made king over all of Israel when Samuel poured a cruet of oil over his, the crown of his head. These anointings were also a sacrament, but not of entombment, but enthronement. The pouring of oil upon the head symbolized priestly or kingly power. And more than that, ac actually conferred this power that was signified. People go head first into power, or they go feet first into the grave. Jesus was anointed on his feet not on his head. So the anointing at Bethany signified the deprivation of power, the destruction of all authority, that is death and the grave. When Aaron's priesthood, the, the Aaronic priesthood may have endured Aaron's progeny, but Aaron himself had no more power to bless or sacrifice when his feet were carried over the verge of the tomb. David had heirs on the throne of Judah, but he himself passed under the sovereign power of death. 
And yet, when Mary anointed Jesus' feet, she made a sacrament for his burial. She symbolized more than just his death. The anointing of Bethany signified the great paradox, that Jesus, even in his powerlessness, was to exercise the greatest power of all. One of the prophecies of Christ that God would put David's enemies under his feet. When Mary anointed the feet of Jesus, she foreshadowed the vanquishment of the one last enemy. She did this on Monday, the second day of the week. On Sunday, the eighth day, Jesus, the son of David, would rest his foot on the neck of conquered death. Remember that these moments, these intimate moments, these moments of blessing, these moments of authority, these moments of giving, they all confirm that God is with us. Please, as you approach a time when all this is over and we can be with each other again, never take those small moments for granted. A handshake, a hug, a pat on the back could be all the blessing someone needs to give them the power they need to make it through the day. Amen. Into thy hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Into thy hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. For thou hast redeemed me, O Lord, thou God of truth, I commend my spirit. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. Into thy hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Before the ending of the day, Creator of the world, we pray that with thy wanted favor thou wouldst be our guard and keeper now. From all ill dreams defend our eyes from nightly fears and fantasies. Tread underfoot our ghostly foe that no pollution we may know. O Father, that we ask be done through Jesus Christ, thine only Son, who with the Holy Ghost and thee doth live and reign eternally. Keep us as the apple of an eye, hide us under the shadow of thy wings. Preserve us, O Lord, waking, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Amen. We shall read the Nunc Dimittis responsibly. Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. Mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to lighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Preserve us, O Lord, waking, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. We say the creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. 
From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. For those of you following at home, you are welcome to kneel if you wish, or you may remain seated, of course, as we share in these prayers together. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. We say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Blessed art thou, Lord God of our fathers, to be praised and glorified above all forever. Let us bless the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Let us praise him and magnify him forever. Blessed art thou, O Lord, in the firmament of heaven, to be praised and glorified above all forever. The Almighty, the most merciful Lord, guard us and give us his blessing. Amen. We confess to God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed through our own grievous fault. Wherefore we pray, God, have mercy upon us. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us all our sins and deliver us all from evil. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and bring us to life everlasting. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the almighty and merciful Lord grant unto you pardon and remission of all your sins, time for amendment of life, and the grace and comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Wilt thou now turn again and quicken us, that thy people may rejoice in thee. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. Vouchsafe, O Lord, to keep us this night without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us. O Lord, hear our prayer, and let our cry come unto thee. Lighten our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of thy only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Be present, O merciful God, and protect us through the silent hours of this night, so that we who are wearied by the changes and chances of this fleeting world may repose upon thy eternal changelessness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We will lay us down in peace and take our rest. For it is thou, Lord, only that make us dwell in safety. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and Holy Ghost, bless and preserve us. As we continue through this holy week, we will be sharing in many forms of worship. We hope that you have shared in the bishop's message tonight at the service of healing. We pray that you've also partaken in the services provided by our brothers and sisters in our neighboring parishes here in our community, from our United Church with Reverend Stephanie, from our, on Wednesday, from our Salvation Army Church with uh, Major Darlene, and even tomorrow now with us, with Reverend Jean and everything else that we are going to be producing and be a part of this week. Continue with us as we continue to share in the story of the Passion through this week, that when we come to the end, we may find a new beginning. 